Hi, it's Paula from Honest String and uh, welcome to my Christmas beading extravaganza. I've got lots of things that I want to go through and show you today. There'll be comments that'll come up on the screen and I'll go through and answer those, any questions, etc. that come up. I'm really excited to share this new video broadcasting side of things that I'm doing here today as well. So thank you for those who come along and watch. I'm always really grateful for people who are interested in what I do in beading and want to come and see some of the Honest String activities. So I'm going to go through and show you lots of different Christmas things today and you'll see some new things, some things I've made, things that have been gifts to me as well. So I thought I'd show a whole range of different things. So bear with me while I flick to the new screen and you'll be able to see my work zone. Look at that, amazing. Hi Lorraine, nice to see you here. Welcome. I'm really happy to show this new products and things that I'm going to be sharing here today. I've just got to grab my glasses. Ah, oh, hi Shelley, nice to see you here from Texas as well. Thank you. Okay, so lots of fun Christmas things that I want to go through and show you today. So different mediums as well, so not just beads, a few other things. Um, Number one is my Christmas carrier beads. So you can see those here. These are a really fun range that I designed a couple of years ago. So they all use um, a double carrier bead, so two plastic carrier beads on the inside. And you can see there the holes that go all the way through those. They've got some really cool Christmas designs. So, you know, Santa, Holly, uh, Christmas present, there's a bauble, gingerbread man, a star, an icicle, oh, that one's upside down, a wreath, a reindeer, Santa, a Christmas tree and a boot. And there's some really great ideas that you can use these for. So you can make a pair of earrings like my little Santa earrings that are here with just a wired hook all the way through. You can use these to do um, like table decorations. You can thread some string or ribbon through the holes and use them as napkin holders. You can make a little tiny Christmas tree and decorate a Christmas tree. Put them all together, string them, you know, with some elastic and make a, a bracelet with them or a necklace. So you can use them as a tag or gift tag on a, a gift as well. Hi from Tennessee. Donna, nice to see you here as well. Thank you. So these are just some really fun ideas. I'll put up a little link. Um, this is the link. To One little idea that I wanted to show you. Another one I've got here is these Christmas tree earrings. So these use the marguerite um, crystal flowers. Uh, I'll just wait for that to focus so you can get to see that. They're beautiful, just gorgeous little simple design, just on wire with a, a cubes, um, cube crystal bead at the bottom as well. These were actually made for me by my dear friend Kerry Putnans, who is no longer with us. So I wear these um, and I think of Kerry whenever I have these on. And I've also got them in the green colorway as well with the red box. So they're really special to me because they, they are something that's come from Kerry. So yeah, they're using just those marguerite flowers. So really nice, easy Christmas beading idea if you want one. Another one I wanted to show you was a gift that came to me from my friend Julie Pearden. And this is um, all polymer clay. So these are all polymer clay discs that Julie has created and then created them into... birdies in here swapping that thank you um, you can see here this is a gorgeous decoration so Julie has hand painted all of these polymer clay pieces and put them together to make this hanging tree so just a really nice gift idea if you're into polymer clay it's another way to create something um, I couldn't go by and not show shrink it so uh, if you've followed me for a while, you know that I love working with the Shrinket plastic. This is just a really nice gift tag idea. So I made this for my grandson, Mason. This is one that's just got a little beaded decoration in it, lots of drawings of Christmas, etc. And that's just, you know, shrunk and is a gorgeous gift tag idea. So Shrinkets for Christmas is great as well. And what else have I got here? Uh, some these are some of just the range of earrings that are in the honest string range so there's some lovely little Christmas trees these are all acrylic just on large hoops 
really nice and easy to wear great you know fashion item as well so and really good for gift giving so there's those ones and these are the range for 2023 so this is the christmas stars i actually think i this is the last pair of stars that i have so if you are interested in them this is the only pair of stars that are left but they're just a really nice easy um, beading project breeding idea to wear and last but not least i thought i would just share again the bauble that i made um, as part of the cranberry um, christmas design on the fly that i did last month so this is a shaker bauble so it's got some beads and bells and things inside it and it's also got lots of beaded decoration so this is one of the openable fillable baubles you can just see that line there where the bauble actually opens and it's one that actually just opens up you can put your little shaker things in there and then i just beaded a nice beautiful band around it and then a lovely strap at the top did a beaded tassel i mean i always like to add a tassel onto things as well and then i just created a little warp square bale for that too hi from puerto rico this is amazing and someone's watching with a coffee that's glenda is it thank you lovely to see you all here um so bead beaded tassel on that shaker bauble as well so that's just some of the christmas things the other one that i thought i would wear today this was one of the very first beading projects I ever made. So this is a peyote band uh, that has got all little Christmas trees on it. I, I probably should make a new one. If I look at my beading from sort of 10 or 15 years ago, it, it probably could be done a bit better. But, you know, this sort of shows how much I've progressed, I suppose, as well. But it's got lovely little trees in it with cube beads. It's got a little sort of tinselly effect at the bottom. The, the cubes and the peyote actually make it wave, which is really nice. So you get that lovely feel with it as well. Um, and it's just got a button clasp on it as well. So I, I probably would do this quite different now, but the concept is really nice. And I do enjoy wearing this, you know, two or three times a year just at Christmas time. So it is lovely. Uh, the other one that I wanted to show you now was some of the projects that we're going to have a look at today. So I, I thought I'd start with something. Oh, sorry, one more. Um, and this is another Christmas decoration I made a couple of years ago. So this is using a beautiful piece of polymer clay with gold and green and red colours in it that has just got some you know nice decorations around the outer edge. This is a piece of clay that came from Leanne Fergus and it's just a lovely little one just to hang on a tree. So that's just some of my Christmas things. Okay, so now what we're going to have a look at today, we've got, I've got a really simple pair of earrings. You'll be surprised how simple they actually are. I've got a bell decoration I want to show you and a bauble. So any, I'll start with the bauble. This was my idea for a Christmas bauble. So you see lots of different, uh, morning Meg, nice to see you here too. You see lots of different baubles around the place with netting and, and all sorts of things on them. And I was thinking about how did I want to actually decorate a bauble. So when I'm prepping for these classes or these demonstrations, I'm often in here the night before working it out. So literally this was last night. So I grabbed one of the baubles off my Christmas tree and I just played around with how I was going to decorate it. So what I've got here is a band of um, herringbone. And I'll, I'll go through and demonstrate how I made this. So a band of herringbone around the centre first. Then I started with another band um, from side to side. Then I did a little bit of decoration in there, put a lovely Monty in the centre, a little bit of decoration at the top. So quite simple, but effective. And it's I think it's a little bit different looking to some of the other baubles that I see around. I love beaded baubles too. I think they're just really, really gorgeous when you get them done. So that's something that we'll have a look at today. The other one I wanted to show you is a Christmas bell. You can hear that bell there. So I went into um, one of our local um, shops, bed, bed, bath and table, uh, you know, where I buy a lot of home de decor and had these bags of bells. And I just did a beautiful fringed top on the top of my bell. And I swapped out the ribbon for a ring earring finding, which is much easier to hang on your tree like that as well. So that's a really simple decoration. And I'll go through and demonstrate that today as well. And I will also make what I said was the simplest pair of earrings in Christmas colours. So I was thinking about a wreath style earring and literally I had these rings here that 
you can actually take them apart with the, the hook at the top and then push that back in like that. And I have literally just threaded onto that some gorgeous green crystals and some red crystals. So, it, sorry, green pearls and red crystals with a bit of gold in the center. And that's just a really nice, easy hoop earring. Not everything has to be really complex when we make them, but I just thought this is just a really simple one and I'll go through and show that today. So that's some of the things we're going to cover and have a look at. So I am just going to thread my needle and get started. Now, if you've watched me bead before or heard me talk before, I generally will use Fireline for most of my projects. In this one, I'm using Fireline Smoke. And I will always start with a size 10 needle because it is, for me personally, the easiest needle to thread. Uh, and if I need to swap to a smaller needle to get through a tight bead spot, I will. But I generally will always start with a size 10 and always about a metre and a half of thread. Um, I'm more than comfortable with adding in new thread if I need it. So I've grabbed another bauble off my Christmas tree. I did get a smaller one this time, so it doesn't take me quite as long. These are just the standard baubles that, you know, you buy from, from Kmart or whatever. Um, and my trick with um, adding beads to baubles like this is double-sided tape. So I have a roll of what's called terrifically tacky tape and this is the thin um, one-eighth of an inch I think it's called which is just perfect for putting around things here just to hold that first row of beads in place. So I'm going to sort of eye line and see the center of my bauble and just wrap that piece of tape just around the center like that. Get to the other side and then just snip that off. And now I can just peel off that red um, plastic part. And now can you just see on there ever so slightly there is the row of tape that's just around the edge there. Now what that tape does, it's fantastic for just holding the beads in place. I'm going to do a bright colour on this one because uh, you can do some really traditional Christmas colours but I, I sort of thought I might do a nice hot pink um, on this one because I have some new beautiful hot pink beads. This is this is one of my favourite colours to use at the moment. It's called uh, Opaque Fuchsia Luster. And it, I've got these in 8s, 15s and 11s now and I'm using them on all sorts of things. And I thought I might do this one with a bit of hot pink and lime green on it. So I'm just going to start with a really simple herringbone, just a two bead herringbone um, strap in the size eight beads. And to start that, I pick up four beads and go through all four beads again, and then just come back through the top uh, two beads so that they sit side by side in that little column like that. And now I'm just picking up two beads, going through the um, previous two beads added, going across and coming straight back up again as well, like that. So there I now have six beads in a little herringbone strap. But to make this even faster, I will now pick up four beads at a time and do these columns in double. So again, I'll just pick up four beads, come back through the last bead added, and then go all the way up through the three beads on that column. Pull that nice and tight. And now I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five in my little cut stack. So I'll now pick up four beads again. So what this does is just speed up that herringbone strap. Uh, they can, you know, if you're using a much smaller bead, of course they will take longer, but using the size eights makes it really quick to just get that strap done. And what I want to do is make a foundation strap that is wide enough to um, go around my little mini bauble here. So I'll just keep adding on my four beads at a time. So now if there's any questions that come up, by all means, add them into the chat because my, my technical support, my very clever brother is helping me do this new format of filming today and he's there to help me with any questions, uh, which is great. So if you do have questions, please um, add them into the chat and we might be able to see them come up on screen as well. 
Um, Alex, why hadn't you thought of that? I don't know. Welcome. Nice to see you here too. Um, it's amazing just the little simple things you can pick up to make your beading go faster. So for me, uh, one of, this is something also I learned from Katrina when we did a class with her, Katrina Starpens, at um, our bead retreat last year. She was talking about edging in bead embroidery, how she picks up double the amount. I'd always picked up two. She picks up four. I thought, no wonder she's so fast. So this is a great way to just, you know, speed up your beading um, work. With those little tips that you pick up, whether it's from watching demonstrations like this, whether it's from a class that you might take, from magazines, or just trial and error. And one way to keep track of all of those things, of course, is to note them down. I use a notebook regularly to track all of those bits and pieces, save all the um, sites and tips that I want to keep a, a record of. So good way to just capture that. So you can see now I've sort of got a reasonable size strip. I still need a bit more though to go around my little bauble. But because I've popped that tape on there, look at that, it just sticks there. And it is hidden. You won't see the tape when it's actually finished. But I can just remove that sit that back over to the side. So I will keep making my herringbone strip here with four beads at a time and just speed things up. So has everybody got some ideas of things they're making for Christmas as well? Please talk to me about some of yours. The other project that I want to show you, of course, is the Christmas stars as well. And I'll, I'll go back to that later. But the stars project that I did in, I think, 2020, my, my beading friends and I, and some of them are on here, we all made a pact that we were going to make a, a different um, warp star every month in our own colour theme for Christmas so that we could decorate our, our Christmas trees. I ended up making nine out of the 12. So that wasn't too bad. Uh, some people were really good and finished all 12. Um, I, I was not one of those, I did nine, but I'm really happy with my, my Christmas tree and it actually is in my bedroom all year. I don't put it away. It's really nice to actually see that all the time. Bead journal, absolutely, Alex, great way to keep track of your beading stuff. So um, some of you may already know, but I have designed a journal called My Beading Journal. It's going to be featured in a couple of magazines shortly, which is really exciting, but you can actually see that on either my website or my Etsy store. And the My Beading Journal has been endorsed by Nancy Kane, which is lovely. She's written a beautiful foreword for me for that journal. And great way just to keep track of your beading progress, whether it's design, uh, bead stores, patterns that you own, tutorials you own. How many of us have you know purchased a tutorial a second time? I'm certainly one of those. Um, so yeah, it's certainly a great way to keep track of what you're doing in the beading world. Now I'm just going to keep doing my little herringbone strip. And keep adding on my beads four at a time, making this go hopefully super fast. And I'm assuming people can see this really, really easily, which is good. You should see my bead studio now. It looks like a TV studio. I've got lights, camera, action happening everywhere in here now. And uh, my brother Brian, who has become an honorary member of the Honest String VIP Facebook group to help me with this stuff. Um, he has set all of this up for me, which is great. Um, if you're interested in joining the Honest String VIP group, uh, we will pop a link into the chat here shortly where you can actually join that group. It's, it's a group for people who really, you know, want to see what I do, see things a little bit earlier, be the first to know about new tutorials or tu um, training, etc., classes that are coming up and any new designs, those sorts of things. And of course, I love to give people a little cheeky subscriber discount as well. So they're the sorts of things that you'll find as part of the Honest String VIP group. And I'd also love it if people shared projects that they've made with me as well. It would be really great to see you include that sort of information too and share your progress with some of your projects. There's lots of people out there that have taken classes with me. So please share your finished products in the Honest String VIP group as well. 
Okay, so I'm now going to see whether my strip is right here. Let's just do a little bit of a, a measure. See how much more I've got to go. Or oh, not too much. You can see there's a nice little gap there. So probably about another maybe three columns. So let's just add in one more set of four. And see whether that's right. Because what I want to do then is just join this strap. So I'm just going to tape, stick that down on the tape. Now I'm pulling that tension relatively tight on this as well because I don't want it to be a loose band. I want that to be um, firm. You can see there there's a gap there. That's about a one bead width. So I am now going to one bead or is it a two bead? Let's see. I pull that tight. No, I think it's a two bead. Okay, so because it's a two bead, I'm just going to take that off. Notice I haven't counted anything yet. This is not a project where I really need to count. Um, it doesn't really matter how many beads are on the strap. I just want it to be really firm around that bauble. Some things require really specific counting. This, this doesn't yet. So I'm going to now tape that, stick that down again. And that tacky, when they, it's called terrifically tacky tape, it is still sticky. I've taken this strap off, you know, two or three times now, and that tape is still holding its, its stick for this project. So you can see there, oh no, that will join. Okay, I don't need to add an extra bead. So I've now lined up the two ends of my little herringbone strap there. And I'm just going to go across to my starting um, section like that and then come across this way and join that together. Just hold it down on my little tape there. Look at that, I've now got a little band all the way around my piece there. Okay, so really simple way just to get that band and because of the tape, it's holding it in place really well. I'm actually going to cut off that crappy string that's on there. Number one, because it's annoying me, but I'll make a beaded string to go on there. Okay, so when I have a look at my original design here, you can see here I've done, there's my band and then I've got this little section here from the sides. So I want to build up a side section to go up to the top of my, my bauble. Uh, and I will cut off my tail thread as well. I don't need that any longer. Oh, wrong scissors, Paula. Grab the right scissors. Oh no, that cut off, okay. So, to do my little band, the next thing I'm gonna do is just pop another little piece of tape on that side piece there. This is not as critical as the, um, the starting piece, but it does help to hold that um, little side on. So again, I'll just take off the um, little red plastic on that tape. Oh, the tape just popped off altogether then. I'm just gonna shorten that a little bit. Pop that back on again. And that's just gonna hold my little side band in place as well. And Peel off that. Come on. Doesn't want to cooperate. There it is. Peel that off there too. Okay, so you can see now I've just got another little piece of tape. Just come right off that time. Try again. Another little piece of tape here on my bauble. Okay. Now I'm going to just find the set right section to. Continue the herringbone up the so up to the top of the bauble. So I'm just going to come back through again, and I want to come out in those centre two beads. So I've just undone my okay. Let me just rejoin that 
I thought I was reinforcing, I was actually undoing. Go all the way back around and I just want to have my needle coming out so that I'm lined up with the two beads just here that are going to be the base of my next row of herringbone up the top. So again, I'm just going to pick up two beads to start that. Go through those two beads again, like that. And you can see here it's just slid off the tape a little bit, but that's okay. We can just move it back on. And what I've just done now is just change direction for the herringbone. So the herringbone now is going upwards instead of around. So again, I will just pick up four beads, come back down through the two, two again. But I'm also going to reinforce by going through those two beads on the center band as well, and then come up through three beads like that. And some more beads. And continue that again and I think four beads will probably finish that for me up to the top of my bauble maybe one more again no no tutorial or anything for this at this stage I've just been I just literally played around with this last night but I think it's a really easy um, concept so by all means take it and do what you want with it create your own little um, sort of I think empress looking I think was what went through my mind um, bauble when I was making it and I'll just add another two on there and come back through and we're going to actually use the um, the little cap thing that sits on top of the bauble that's what's going to help hold this in place as well so I've now got my little side strap there I'll just line that up and what I'm going to do is just sort of thread my needle underneath that cap there. Just come out the other side. So you won't see this. This is just sitting underneath that edge cap there. But I want to be coming out the other side here so that I can make that strap on the opposite side. So again, I'm just going to pick up four beads. Oh, sorry, I'll pop a little bit of tape on there first. That one's a little bit sticky. A little bit of tape just helps hold that strap in place. Um, as I said, you don't see that, but it, it is, yeah, it's a nice little aid to help with your bauble. So I'm just going to stick that on my bauble there as well. Come on, don't stick to me. There we go. Take that bit off. So another little piece of tape just there on the opposite side. Again, I'm just going to pick up four beads and I'm going to go back. Remember when I very first started, I did that sort of little circle of four beads. I'll do the same thing again here. And we're just going to snug that all the way up to the edge of my little cap there. And I'm sticking that down now on top of that tape. So again, one, two, three, four beads. This is probably the only thing I'll really have to count on here is um, how many did I have on the other side and how many have I got on this side so that it's even. And when I pull that nice and firm and stick that down on my tape, come on. I need to come up through one more bead there. Okay, just requires a little bit of smudge snugging. But there you go, you can see now I've now got the little band it's forming on both sides so I've got six beads I've got four there so I only really need to add in another set of four and then join them to the belly band as well 
And I'll just loop that, yep. As you know, when I'm doing these things live, you get to see me make mistakes as well and uh, work things out as we go. But I have I have tried to prep some stuff today, so it's not so much design on the fly, but you will watch me make these. Okay, so now I'm going to join this to my belly band, and I'm just going to sort of find and line that up to two beads in the band the same way that I started this side piece move that across there then if I go back up to the top here just to sort of help straighten that strap out all the way through come back down again we will top I will attach this top part again at the very end but for now that will do so you can see here now I've got my my band is on two sides and now I just want to repeat that across the base here as well. So again, I'm just going to come out through those two beads there. And as we tighten this, everything just starts to sit really smoothly. So again, I'm flipping the herringbone direction. So I'm just picking up two beads, going through those first two beads just here. Go back up through that one there. And now get into my swing of picking up four at a time. Go through the uh, the two beads so that I'm just really securing that and build that all the way around now, the base of my bauble. So this is where size eight beads, they're fantastic. They're just that little bit bigger. They make your work go so much faster. So for those of you who are real purists um, and you know love size 11s and 15s, like me, I do love those too. I love a size 8 bead for you know making a really good foundation in a project, for being a bead that's got a really nice big forgiving hole, so it's easy to do lots of um, passes through that as well. So really great bead for you know lots of projects and for having as a foundation in your beadwork. So you can see here I'm now just building that strap. I don't know how many beads I need for this. It's just a matter of making it tight enough. And I also haven't put any tape in place to hold this either. I don't think it needs it around the bottom because we've already got tape around the center, tape at the top, and this one, the tension that happens as a result of joining it from side to side to the belly band will just keep that in place as well. So I'm just going to keep going through with this. Just draw that tight. How many more have I got to do? Oh, a little bit more. Okay. One, two, three, four. A really simple, easy project this one is just to create um, that look of a, a wrapped bauble, I suppose, with, with a, a bit of a band around it. Um, you could do you could do more bands and you know create them all the way around, but I did not also want to overcomplicate it, so it is nice and simple. The other, my other tip for some of these Christmas ideas is to, to keep an eye out in your, your decor shops for Christmas things. As I said, the, the bells that I got from Bed, Bath and Table, I'll, I'll show you the bag of them. They're like $12 and, you know, 12 bells in them. They're really cool. I will, you know, make some more of those for Christmas decorations. But just... I looked as soon as I saw the bell in the shop, I thought, oh, I think I'll be able to bead something on that. So it was worth getting them. There's definitely lots of things out there. The the packets of um, fillable baubles as well, you know, from the craft stores, they're really good to have on hand. There's lots of techniques of painting, you know, putting paint and glitter and those sorts of things inside them as well. So just, you know, look out for different ways to use them. So you can see here my gap here. 
I've got maybe a gap of about six beads. So let's just do one more group of four. On there. Okay, now is that going to join? Let's say this is the, the question. Is it going to join? I think I need, oh no, that should join. Okay, so again, I'm just lining that up with, you know, two beads in that belly band there. Yep, perfect. And go back down through again, just to secure that bottom band a couple of times. So I'll come back up through. Like that. Look at that. What do you think? Any any thoughts, feedback on the uh, the easy herringbone wrapped bauble idea? Nice, super easy Christmas bauble project, I think. So. Okay, I'm just going to adjust that to sit over my tape I don't want it to move now that it's all built and in place okay now now I need some beads to put in the the corners like this one I've got some Monty's here as well so I've got some little I'll just grab some green size four mil beads out because I think that's a really nice contrast um, or blue, that will do. Nice contrast with this. So these are just some four mil um, blue beads. So when I have come to this sort of corner, I thought, okay, how am I now going to fill that in, that obvious cross? So what I did was come out of the second bead on the, the belly there, pick up a four mil, go back down through the second bead on the the um, strap, go back up through the second bead on the next strap, pick up a four mil, go down through the second bead, up through the second bead, pick up a four mil, down through the second bead, up through the second bead. So that way my um, exit and entry points for the beads, the extra um, four mils are all in exactly the same spot and then down through the second bead there as well. So nice and easy, just added those four beads onto the um, cross. Now I want to add that little band around it. So I'm actually going to come back up and go up through the third bead there. And I'm going to run out of thread shortly, so that's okay. I will add some more thread on. I'm going to pop um, a silver size 11 over the top of this. This is, um, you will have heard me talk about this before, my favourite silver colour. So the Czech silver um, in, from Mayuki, but with the Czech silver finish. This is my, my go-to bead for silver for most projects. I love it. It's um, one that comes in size... 8, 11 and 15. I have all of those colours, uh, sizes and I use them regularly. So I've just picked up uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 beads and again I'm going to come down through the third bead now. So I'm coming out of the third bead, I'm going down through the third bead and that just creates that nice little band around those beads there as well. Again I'm going to come up through the third bead, pick up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 size 11 beads, go down through the third bead, which is that one just there. Come on. Not cooperating, but it'll get there. Just got to maneuver my needles. This is where this is how your needles get so bent out of shape. My brother, when he was actually helping me set this stuff up the other day, saw my needles and asked me the question: Were they supposed to be like that? I said yes. That is what happens. They get nice and bent. And a bent needle is often 
just what you need for these sorts of things. There you go, it goes in there. So there's my little six beads around there. Um, come up through the third bead here, which is that one just there. Pick up my six beads. Go back down through the third bead. Like that. Back up through the third bead. Now I will repeat that pattern on the other side of this bauble as well. I won't do that today, but I, that's one of the ways that I will finish this will be to do that pattern and pick up those six again. And now I'm just going to come back up to the center. So you can see there, I've now got this nice little decorative pattern on the um, center of my little cross there. And then I can add on, and I grabbed these out before, a nice little Monty that can sit just in the middle there as well. So it just gives that little bit of shine to it as well. I am going to add some more thread on though because I'm going to run out. Um, I think I have one here. I'm just pull a new thread. So nice, easy decoration for that um, Christmas bauble. As I said, this is a larger one than I did yesterday. So you can see the comparative size of the two. Again, no count or anything with these. This is just, you know, make it up as you go with that herringbone strap. Um, and with a size 8 bead, use that method of, you know, four beads at once and it comes up really, really quickly. Now, uh, I'm just going to join my fire line. So my, my way of joining is I take my tail or working thread, I tie a loop in my new thread that I'm adding, I pop that over the top, of my tail thread and I grab the two ends and just pull the, pull the um, knot around it. I then like to get my scissors and cut off just those two ends so it's a nice clean cut. I then get my very hardcore cigarette lighter and I just touch that to the ends of both of my um, tails there and I pull those two things together and there you go it didn't work that time that's okay I'll do it again so there's my loop didn't melt them enough tie the loop over the top cut off the ends melt them so they form that nice ball on the end of the the fire line pull those together yeah that one's going to work and then just run my thumb thumb and forefinger over the um, knot. Hi Annie, nice to see you here too. That's lovely. Um, okay, so I've now just joined that. I'm also just going to run in my thread through that the Monty. So a Monty is a bead that has um, a, a case on the outside, a metallic case. It holds the crystal, but it has these little great channels that are underneath it. So this is a crystal that doesn't have a hole in it, but the Monty with that cross back little um, capture piece makes it easy just to stitch that on. So I'm now just going to stitch that by going through, you know, a couple of beads and adding that on. And it just gives that nice central point, uh, a little bit of sparkle with the, the Monty and the crystal. And then I'm just going to find another place to run through that channel again. So I'll just go through that center channel. And something's caught there because that wasn't a very smooth pull through. Nope. Okay, let's just undo that. Reverse bead that because that didn't go through very nicely. Okay. Do that again. Uh, okay, I'm just popping my Monty in place. Ah, oh, see, it's just caught over the claw there. I can't seem to undo that, so I'm just going to try and ignore that. I'll run that through there and come out at another point first. Okay, um, just attach that by going through a couple of those beads. I am holding that Monty in place with my thumb there so that it doesn't move too far from where I want it to be even though it's not firmly attached just yet but it just helps to stop that sort of tangle that I experienced a little bit earlier 
Okay, there's my great little Monty held in place. Again, I'm just going to run through the, the channel there to secure it. Okay, and that's pretty much tight. Now, I'm going to just do a little bit of decoration around that Monty. So you'll see what I mean by that in a second. I'm just going to undo. There's a knot there in my thread. Okay. Now, one of the ways to highlight, uh, if you look at this one here, I've got some sort of gold and silver around the edge of that Monty. So we'll do that here. So what I did was use that channel that's there. So I'm going to come out of the channel like that. Okay, now I'm just going to pick up three size 11 beads and I'm going to go through the next channel. So I'm actually creating that sort of corner um, look. So you can see there I've now got three beads around the Monty. Can you see that there? Okay, I'm now going to pick up another three beads and go through the next channel and create another corner like that. Pick up three beads and create another corner by going through that next channel. And then pick up three beads and create another corner by going through that channel there. Now I want to actually join those together so I'm going to come through three beads like that. And I'm just going to grab a size 8 bead. Uh, I don't want a silver, I want a different colour. I think I'll have a gold one. Grab a size 8 bead and then I'm just going to go through the next three beads like that. Pick up another size 8, go through the three beads. Pick up a size 8, go through the next three beads. Another size 8 and go through the next three. So you can see now that Monty's got a really nice decoration around it as well. Really simple way just to um, create a bit of focus on the front of that bauble. Now, I said before I was going to do some top decoration. I won't do the other side, but you'll you get the gist of what I do. So if you look at the other one, it's got the decoration on both sides. And I, I promise I will get to that today, but I want to uh, move on to something else shortly. So I'm just going to go through all of those beads again because I want to get back up to the top of this bauble so that I can show you how I did the decoration around the top. Okay, so I'm just sort of manoeuvring my thread to come out where I need it to be so that I can go uh, up the channel of this sort of herringbone strip here. So I'm at the top there. I'm just now just going to push my needle to go all the way to the top. Remember I said earlier I used that cap to um, hold that thread in place. I'm now just going to repeat that on the other side. So I'll just go through that opposite bead on the other side there. Now I'm just going to run, uh, I think probably maybe, and I put a size 4mm bead there as well, so I think maybe I might need two size 8 beads and one 4mm and two size 8s and I'm just going to go all the way through to the opposite um, side there, we'll see if that's enough. No, I need three, okay, that's okay. I could have tested that first. I think I did three on the other one, so I probably should have looked at that. Uh, just need to undo that because it's got caught. So three size eight beads, not uh, two Paula. Sorry, I just had to re-thread my needle for that. Okay, anybody else doing Christmas beading today? 
tell me some of the Christmas feeding you're currently doing. I'd love to hear it. I know Rosemary's making earrings galore. Uh, I don't know what other people are doing though. So tell me some of your Christmas be beading that you're doing. Okay, so three. Then I'm going to go through the opposite side like that. Just up to, come on, one through one of those beads there on my opposite strap. Now, because because I'm now going to draw that tighter, that will help with tension with that too. Go to the opposite side. See how that's just drawn that nice and tight there now around the top of the bauble. Pick up three, size four, one, two, three, and then opposite side again. Just like that. And now my bauble has got a little bit of decoration around it. And what did I do? Oh, look, I put some gold around the top one as well. So I'll do that here too. So I'll do silver actually. So I'll go back now to um, come out of the size 8 next to the 4 mil bead there. And all these pass-throughs, all it does is just create really good tension for your piece. So I think probably 4 or 5, maybe 6 size 11 beads go around the base of that oh look at that beautiful go around there like that come back up through so just repeat that on the other side as well so come out of the size 8 near the um, 4 mil and now pick up six one two three four five six size 11 beads and then just run that through there again and now when i pull that nice and taut i've got this lovely decoration around the top as well as my beautiful central piece with the monty in it uh, and that strap around the bauble so Christine, you're working on the Christmas pod from the Cranberry Advent Calendar. Fantastic. Lorraine, you're making Christmas tree and Santa earrings. It's so good to see people using all of their Christmas stuff and creating, you know, decorative items as well. So there's the, uh, the Paula Christmas Bauble project. Again, please take this idea and use it however you wish. A herringbone strap around your bauble, the terrifically tacky tape to hold that in place. Uh, you can do a little top decoration, some little Monty's on the side with some 4 mil contrast colours, classical Christmas colours, whatever you want to use. So that's the first project that we're doing today is the Paula Christmas bauble. So I hope you enjoyed that. Anybody got any thoughts on baubles and the way they like to use them? Please pop a comment in the, in the field. Uh, if you've got any questions, more than happy to answer those questions as well. So let me do a little quick board clean up unusual i know for me to do a board cleanup but i want to before we go on to the next project i'm going to show you the um the christmas bells that i that i got as i said it was from bed bed bath and table um in their christmas decoration um, stuff that they had and i grabbed both gold and silver in these bells and there you go they were $12.99 for 10 jingle bells. So they're rose gold and gold, um, just like this. And I first thing I did was cut off this horrible crappy ribbon on it because I didn't really like that. And I thought, what a much easier way to hang that on the, the tree will be with an earring um, wire. So the, the round earring wires... Are fantastic for this so this type of earring wire is what I used to hang that so just easier to pop that on your tree as well just to um, slide that on there and you know you don't have to tie a bow any of that sort of stuff so easy now what we're going to do with this one so where's my finished one over here so there's my finished bell that I did yesterday. 
So you can see here I've just put some little fringes on the top, crystals, pearls, um, seed bead little branches, etc. And it's just created a really nice decorative top on that Christmas bell. So I'm just going to get some thread. I'm actually going to use uh, some crystal for this one, not smoke. My hands get so filthy with smoke, but I'm going to use some, some crystal fire line. And I, I did the other one in traditional Christmas colours. I could do whatever colours I like on this one. I might get some uh, more modern colours out for this. So I'm just, again, size 10 needle, about a metre and a half of thread. And I'm going to use this little bar here to actually attach my thread. So it's a really easy way just to run my needle through that and just tie a knot. Not hard, just a really simple knot will just attach that thread to the um, the top of the bell like that. I'll just do a couple of not pass throughs. We're going to be doing lots of beading over the top of this so you won't see that knot at all. So I've just done that, you know, four or five times. Uh, I'll just cut that tail a bit shorter. I won't cut it right to the very edge, but I've just got rid of the, you know, the most of that tail. Okay, now in terms of colours, um, anyone got any suggestions for colours? But I am happy to have a look at some more modern colours for this one. So maybe um, a purple, an orange, and an uh, aquary sort of colour. How's that? Purple, orange, and aqua could go with that one and I'll do some silver and gold with it as well so this is really random there's nothing um, particularly thoughtful about this uh, I have just grabbed beads that you know in any sort of fashion so I've got some aqua crystal there and I've got some orange or corally sort of colored beads as well okay now any sort of fringing that I like to do with this type of thing, it's a matter of a base bead, a feature bead, and then a finish bead or stop bead to hold it in place. So for these, I will use the silver again. It's the, the Mayuki silver. So what I do when I do this sort of fringing is I pick up one size 11 bead, a feature bead, and then a stop bead, which in this case is a size 15. Pop all of those on my needle, run that down to the work, and then I'm just going to go back through the feature bead and the size 11 bead so that the stop bead holds that little stack in place, just like that. Now I'm just going to do it again. And I'm not thinking, I'm really not thinking about what I'm adding. I'm just doing a really random selection which beads are going to go in here. And the beauty of this bell is that lovely big hole that's there means I can do lots of pass-throughs um, on the this sort of little stack. I'm going to use the, um, the thread bridge that I created by building that knot as part of my foundation for holding things in place as well. I'm using the, the bridge from the bell, the, the bar that's in the bell as well. And I'm just keep on building by adding in little pieces of fringing on the top of that. And it creates a really simple, easy decoration on the top of this bell. So I'm now just randomly still picking up the same fringing method each time. So a size 11, a feature bead and a size 15. And just going through the bridge or the the little bar for the bell and the little ring that I popped on there earlier that just sort of stays in place it really doesn't get in the way it's just there you can run your needle through around it no problem at all and if I want to have a little bit of a longer stack I would put two size 11 beads on as a foundation bead, a foundation for my four mils uh, just keep adding those little stacks onto the top of the bell so Great idea to have a look at the um, the Christmas decorations when they go on sale. Often they're they're on sale, you know, well before um, Christmas even, but certainly in the new year. And you know, look out for these little packs of bells if you wanted to um, decorate and embellish those, because this is a really simple, easy beading project. Not all beading has to be really complex, so it can be really easy as well. But this is a great one you could do with kids too. They could certainly um, manage doing this type of a project um, just by threading little beads onto the top 
and creating their own little decorated bell. Again, I'll just keep adding and building up that fringing and then we'll do a couple of little um, fringe stacks as well with this. And the more beads I add, the, the, the stronger that foundation is. There's more places there to keep adding beads onto and I'm just repeating that over and over again. And the, the sort of the fringed method means that your threads get hidden. You don't actually see these threads um, on your work because the beads in there, their fringed capacity just tend to cover all of that stuff. So the tighter you pull it, the more taut it becomes, more and more stable um, if, with every stack that I put on here. And in a second, I'll start doing a couple of little fringes on there as well. Well, that one's gone all the way through to the bead on the other side. That's okay. I'll just strengthen that even further. Go through like that. The other one I wanted to show you today was my, my Christmas bell project. So this was one I did a couple of years ago, which was a um, Nespresso coffee pods. And... I had a whole stack of them and I cleaned them out and, and got them all, you know, nice and fresh to use. And I designed a Christmas bell for those. And I've actually given away the bells. I think my mother got both of them. So I actually don't have a sample here with me anymore. But it is a tutorial you can find on my Etsy store. And I'll just show you what that looks like. work scene look at that I've done a couple more fringes on my bell and now I'm just going to do a couple of branches so the idea of the branches was just to be you know a little bit like um, a tree branch I suppose so I pick up like five or six beads and to make that a little bit different on the ends I've got silver there but I'm just going to pop some gold beads right on the very end of that so if I pick up three or I picked up six um, silver beads and then three size 11 gold beads. I skip over the, the three gold beads. Just come back through again. And that'll create a nice little pico on the end of my branch there. Which is just poking its head out there. I've gone all the way back through that little bridge underneath, which is why it sort of disappeared a bit, but that's okay. Um, I'll build another one on this side. So again, five or six um, size 11 silver beads, three of the gold beads. and skip over the three gold beads, go back through all the size 11s. And there you go, there's my little branch that's just sort of sticking there amongst the, uh, the, the bell. So you can see here how easy that is just to create that little decorative bell with some branches and some beads on top. So great, easy project to do. Good idea to use the uh, ring if you can because it just makes it easy to um, hang it on your tree as well. So my brother's telling me uh, looks like he forgot to add audio to the link scene. Okay, so you all got to see that link scene while I was talking away here and he didn't add audio in. So that's Brian's fault. Um, the, the link that I showed you was for my um, Etsy Christmas Bell project, sorry, Coffee Pod project. You can use the code VIP Stringer to get 10% off that at either my Etsy store or my uh, website for anything in store. So 
I'll get Brian to pop that code in there so you get to see the code as well. And by all means, have a look at either the Bell Project or the Christmas Carrier Bead Project. Really simple, um, great and easy Christmas decorations to make. So I will go back and finish that um, Christmas Bell later this sorry well my new bell project later but what I also wanted to show you was a really super super simple earring project so I've got these rings and these would have been something that I'd purchased many years ago when I have um when I started beading so they're a nice wire they're really good they can take that apart that finding apart can pop that back in place and I will clamp that once I've added the beads but I looked at how do I make a really nice simple wreath so all I've done with these is I've added a hook to that top bar as well so to that top section and then I literally got Christmas colors so I have some nice red crystals here and I have some green a really green forest green pearl and I've got some demi rounds. It wouldn't be me if I didn't use a demi round bead in a size 11. And this is something anybody could do this. Actually, I could probably get Brian to do this project if he wanted to. This is a really super simple one. Um, it's a matter of unhooking that wire, grabbing your 4 mil pearl and just threading that on and then interspersing that with a demi round, uh, sorry, demi round bead over the top of that wire they're a little bit fiddlier to get on but they certainly do fit over the wire then i've done a red crystal then another demi round and i'm, I'm not even using a needle here i'm just using the um, beads picking the beads up and adding them onto that ring really easy easy project but you know in these colors it's super effective and no doubt i could go and you know do more decoration over the top and add different things on and that's not to say that I probably won't do that um, later today, but for something that's nice and quick and easy to you, quick and easy to make, these wire rings uh, are great for making a nice hooped earring. And particularly in these colours, at this time of year, it looks just like a Christmas wreath. So nice and easy project. And you see how quickly I'm just popping those on. The demi rounds are the hardest to get on. Um, they're just a little bit fiddly, but they're popping on and when I thread those around my ring you can see how easy that is to create that um, wreath looking ring. The, the other thing um, if you have not yet joined or would like to join the VIP group for On A String there is a few free tutorial on there at the moment for making Christmas wreath earrings not this design another beaded design so by all means please join the VIP group for On A String You'll be the first to hear about new projects and classes and designs, etc. And you'll also get, you know, secret discounts, but you'll have access to free tutorials as well. So please have a look at those, um, the On A String group. And Brian might put uh, the group name in there. What size beads and seeds are I using? The, side, the beads are 4 mil Annie for both of these. So 4 mil pearl and a 4 mil crystal. And the demi rounds are a size 11 demi round. Uh, the size 8, I did try the size 8, was just a bit loose. Um, whereas the size 11 just gives that nice um, little break in between the pearl and crystal and because it's a big ring they actually thread on really easily if this was a smaller diameter ring I think the curve is a bit tight then to get those beads to thread around them but for this you know look how easy that is to actually just thread those onto it add a hook and I'm wearing a green top today I'll be wearing these earrings out um, nice easy way to make a, a hoop earring but I will just keep doing that, nice and simple. Um, you could just add half of the beads around here. You wouldn't have to add them all the way if you didn't want to. These, these rings are a, a feature in themselves, as in being a, a nice large hoop, but you can keep adding different things onto there. Uh, okay, keep adding them on. Gorgeous colors for Christmas, bright red, bright green really traditional Christmas colours and if you're going to make this type of earring in another colour that's not Christmas you could wear them at any time of the year but this certainly does um, speak to Christmas with these colours. 
and it's my nails that are probably getting in the way more than anything but oh I'm very proud of how much my nails have grown so I will not be cutting them um, and these are my nails too these are not fake nails I use a product called sister co um, to do my nails it's amazing mineral powder product and I've been using it for a year and my nails have never been in better condition so if anybody's interested in Sistico give me a send me a message I'll tell you all about it I love it it's a really really great product I do my nails myself it takes me about half an hour lasts for a week doesn't chip amazing and they're just yeah really really healthy as well And it's not nail polish, it's a nail powder. So it's a little bit different to um, painting your nails, but similar finish and concept. It just lasts a lot longer and it's nowhere near as damaging as some of the other, you know, SNS or acrylic sort of products that are gel that are around there. It's a really, really good product. Nearly finished. Okay, I need a couple more greens and a couple more reds, I reckon. They just scream Christmas, these colours. Okay, green. Demi round. Red. nearly at the end here so I did try you know beating right up to the very end of this uh, where are my pliers there they are and it didn't give me enough room to um, join the clamp so that's probably as many as I need oh no maybe a couple more yep a couple more uh, one more red and one more green I think we'll do it and then I just sort of crimp the um the finding closed on this so that it doesn't come apart you could add a little dob of glue in there if you wanted to as well um, that would help certainly yep that's enough so i've just sort of got to the end i've got about a centimeter left that's nice and firm i'm just popping that back into that finding there like that and then i just get my pliers and just crimp that closed so it holds nice and firm on that ring okay and then i'll just add a little earring wire at the top voila there is a second set of earrings a second earring made i'll just grab an earring wire over here and just pop that on there you go really simple pair of christmas themed earrings Okay, so what do we think about that? My new system, I'm really happy with that in terms of sharing everything with everybody. So I hope you have enjoyed watching that. I did mention my Christmas star project. It's here in the background of my room. So I found a specific tree to hang all of my Christmas stars on. And there are my nine stars that I made on that. So I probably should at some point go back and make some more. Um, but today we have made the Christmas earrings. And you can see I've got a green top on, so they're going to look really nice with that. So really nice, simple Christmas earring. I've shown you how to make a, a Christmas bell, decorated Christmas bell as well. And I've also shown you a Christmas bauble with a decorative front, a little bauble top as well so a couple of ideas then and loads of other new products and things around earrings um, my beading journal tutorials different projects that I've made throughout the year 
Um, I'd firstly like to say thank you so much to everyone who's come along and done a Facebook Live with me this year. I've already got a planned schedule for what I'm going to do in 2023. So look out for those generally once a month, 11 o'clock on a Saturday, Melbourne time will be when I do them. And if you've got any suggestions or ideas of things you'd like me to do in Facebook Live, by all means send that stuff through. Always happy to accommodate and, and find those things for people. I've really enjoyed doing those this year. I've got to meet people from all over the world. So hi, particularly to Shelley. She's been a constant from Texas who has joined in every uh, Friday night for her, but Saturday for me. So I've really appreciated her attention in joining in these. And of course, all the other people who come along every time and watch and comment and give me suggestions. I really, really appreciate your support of what I do with Honest String. And I hope that you get lots out of it as well. So number one thank you to my brother as well for what he's done to for this um, streaming television studio i now have in my bead studio thanks brian for doing all of that please join the honest string vip group and best wishes and merry christmas to everybody i hope you all have a wonderful festive season and i look forward to seeing you all either in person or on here in the very near future so thank you everybody i'm just going to do my end scene and uh, i'll see you all sometime soon Bye for now.